Well, next thing I want to talk about, we're not seeing them as much, T-lock roofs. Mm -hmm. All right, so T-lock roofs that are the old school, well, not even old school, what, 90s? Uh, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of them in the 90s, and it, the shingles really fit like a T, so they call them T-locks. Now, that product's no longer manufactured, Correct. so the roof, even if it's good, even if it's a good roof, doesn't have hail damage, how do you guys look at that for insurance companies? Or, or what have you Different seen Different insurance companies are, again, you know, they have their own rules, but in general, T-locks are going to be completely ineligible or your roof is going to be excluded and you're not going to have any coverage for it. Okay. So the eligibility question is, can I even get insurance at all on this house? Oh, and so they may say, we're not going to do insurance. Right. You, you have T-locks, we don't like this roof, therefore we're not going to do insurance on this roof. Right. Part of the issue with T-locks is, um, if since they're not produced anymore, if one T-lock shingle gets damaged, well, then the insurance do. company is on the hook for the whole um, replacement of the roof, so the whereas on a normal asphalt shingle roof, we would repair the spots that were hit if it's not deemed a total loss. What about three tabs? Are they still making three tabs? Uh, yeah. Okay. It's All right. So it's, singles, it, yeah. Shingles. It's just <laughs> the um, the T-locks are the biggest issue. The T-locks are the issue because they're not in production anymore, okay. so you can't do repairs. Yep. And the thing with T-locks is there's they lowered the asphalt composition in them and they got lighter over, over time. Oh. I mean, when they first came out, my understanding is they were actually fantastic shingles and they had a lot of asphalt composition in them. And then to save money, it, the asphalt composition got a little bit Product less and cheap. a little bit less. And since they're all linked on the roof, if the wind comes up and picks up one shingle, that whole row is going to be flying off. Oh wow. Okay. All right. So, so it's there's just issues with it, it, it. You guys are just looking at it versus risk and return. So we have this product. So what he's saying is, we may give you insurance for the property, but we'll say, we'll give you insurance, we'll cover everything, but we're not gonna cover the roof. So Hellstorm comes in, yeah. yeah, Hellstorm comes in, you have the hell, the, it damages the roof, it, it needs to be replaced. Well, it's gonna have to be replaced if you have any damage on a T-lock. Right. But in this case, you're not gonna have the backing of your insurance company. Or they could say, 100% we're not going to cover you, but thank you very much, um, right. maybe try this person. And I know this personally happened to me on the building I own. So right. building needed yeah. uh, a new roof and I couldn't get insurance. So so there's two things to look at if you're going, if you're dealing with a buyer and you they love the house but it has a T-lock shingle roof, I mean they're going to have trouble getting insurance. Yeah. So at that point, you know, on the realty side, you're going to want to either get it built in that uh, that roof's getting replaced by the seller or the buyer's going to need to probably get an estimate and be ready to you know, uh, replace that roof as soon as they take possession of that. Exactly. And on the seller side, we yeah. want to let the sellers know, hey, listen, this could be a problem. Yeah. Uh, I don't want any surprises here, but this is something that may have, we may have issues. So it brings me to another one, electric panels. I know we're seeing a lot of different electrical panels out there. Uh, there's some that are notorious for having fail rates. Have you seen anything on your side where the insurance companies are saying we won't protect this or you know this is automatically void now the policy, we won't issue it, anything? Personally, I haven't seen anything where like we have an issue on eligibility. Okay. Um, I mean, adjusters are aware that there are some uh, electrical panels that are not performing to the standard that uh, you would maybe hope, and there are codes that have been put in place regarding those panels being required to be exchanged out if there is a, uh, a loss that affected that electrical panel. Yeah. Okay. For the most part, the insurance company, if you've got the correct uh, coverages, they're going to bring it up to code if there was a loss. Okay. What we don't like to see is the knob and fuse and or the the knob and tube fuse boxes. Yeah, we old we school. don't we right. don't really cover the uh, the old fuse boxes at all. So how do you guys do that? So we get someone that's looking at an old home, and right. it has the old school wiring. They love the home. They want to move forward no matter what. They call. They get an insurance quote. How do insurance companies usually deal with that? Because that's huge. Is that one thing where they say no, we're not going to cover you at all, or do they say? 
cover you for a certain amount? How does that work? It'll be company by company, but uh, a lot of times they're just going to say this is ineligible for our, our company. Okay. Uh, the insurance companies do have their own eligibility requirements. You have to meet those requirements to you know, have the option to have that policy. Okay. So in, in that case, it may be something where an insurance company says, we don't deal with those, and you're going to need to go get a quote somewhere else. Yeah. And it may even be that you know it's either a specialty company that you have to go to, which it's probably going to make the rate go a little bit higher because yeah. you're dealing with something that is inherently more risk than if it had been upgraded. And what that also means is that if you're buying a home with a mortgage, with a loan, your mortgage lender is going to say, if you can't get insurance, we're not giving you a loan for this property. Right. That's the typical route that most people go when they buy a home. They are looking at, all right, we want to make sure our investment's covered. That's why we require you to have an insurance company. If the insurance company says, this home is ineligible, we will not give you insurance on it. You just can't get a loan for that property. You got to keep on going and, and looking for other options. But if you can't get another options, the contract has to be terminated if you want to save your earnest money, depending on how the contract's written. Right, because the home is technically the collateral on that loan. Correct. So they want to they want to know that that collateral is going to be taken care of if something were to happen to the house. So if you can't get the insurance policy, they're not going to be as likely to issue that. Uh, that loan without having the collateral protected.